welcome to the Rick Fuller webinar. Rick Fuller is the team leader of the number one team in the San Francisco Bay Area and Sac County for most recent sales according to Zillow. Rick is a national real estate coach and community leader with four offices, three in the Bay Area and one in Sac County. Rick also has 1,000 five-star reviews online. Rick is my friend, he's my mentor, and I'm always so excited to have these webinars. So I'm Christina Morales, I'm a marketer, I'm a writer, and I'm clearly I'm your biggest fan, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and Christina, we this is number 12. Uh, we've done 12 webinars in the last 45 days. Uh, just to help agents and small businesses survive this real estate market and mm -hmm. have the tools and resources that they need to be successful. And uh, thank you for hanging out with me. That's 12 hours with me, Christina. Oh, plus editing, you know, the video. So it's more <laughs> than that. <laughs> no, but it's been so good to hear everything that you have to say. Um, and I was asking you before we jumped on the call, so what are your sales looking like in the market? And you told me you have 35 active sales, uh, 26 pending and seven oh, closings wow. this week. So what you are doing is working. So all of this information that we've given, it's valuable because you and your team are conducting business, uh, buying, selling homes, great job. Well, thank you, Christina. And I think that's one of the things that, make, that makes us different. There's a lot of very articulate brilliant real estate coaches out there and uh, we we work with a lot of them and we respect them they're amazing probably what makes us different christina like our hands are dirty we're we're in the trenches we're working with buyers and sellers we're serving clients in the san francisco bay area and sacramento county um, and so it just it comes with a pulse on the market and what the only way i know to do these webinars is just to give a glimpse of what we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, so everything we do, it's not a theory or an idea or an ideology. Everything we talk about, this is stuff that we live and this is stuff that we've been doing on our real estate team. Uh, some of these things have been recent changes as a result of shelter in place, and coronavirus and how we're adapting. Other things like what I'm gonna be talking to you about today, I've been operating with this strategy for seven years. You come into my office, and I know you have, Christine. If you look at my, uh, we have uh, glass doors in our office, and I have these five C's written down. They're right there on my glass doors. They've been there so long, I don't even know I can clean them off with Windex now because it's been there. <laughs> it's just part of who we are as a real estate team, and these insights have helped us become uh, successful and helped our, our team members become successful and helped our clients have a great buying and selling experience. And so we just wanna take these ideas and share it with other uh, agents, investors, and small business owners in the community. Mm -hmm. So this webinar should take about 45 minutes long. And like we've said in the past, this is all about you, the people who are joining us. So if you have any questions, comments, please put it in the Q&A box or the chat box because we want to Make sure we answer all of your questions. And so um, we've started two groups, Agents Thrive and Investors Thrive. And now we've survived, we're pivoting. Shelter in place is now, uh, we're, we're changing. And so this is great. And so all of this, this today's topic is going to talk about um, after shelter in place and getting back to reality. Well, it, that's exactly right, Christina. And um, what we know is that uh, development, professional development happens in phases. You know, mm -hmm. you think about it, you, you and I both have kids, we both have daughters. And I remember when they were young and, and you probably remember your daughters and, and they were learning to first crawl. Remember that? They're just laying on their stomach and they're not moving at all. And and, and you could leave them in one place for a moment and you knew they would be right there, right? They were not going anywhere. And the next thing you know, they're crawling and then they're walking and then they're running and then they're sprinting, right? And the same thing happens in professional development. Uh, we don't start off sprinting. We mm -hmm. start off crawling. And when, when professionals begin to understand there's a development cycle, then they start resting in that cycle. They know the cycle and they look forward to the next phase in that cycle. 
I, I'm crawling today, but one day I'll walk. I'm walking today, but one day I'll run. I'm running today, and one day I'll sprint. And mm -hmm. so if you understand that side, first off, I think there's a piece that comes with that. You're like, okay, I'm exactly where I need to be. This mm -hmm. is not abnormal for me. This is not strange or weird. This is the natural professional development that occurs. I call it the five C's. Then what happens is you start, um, when, you, when you have that comfortability or that sense of peace that comes with knowing where you're at and that you're in the right place and what you're going through and what you're feeling is normal, uh, then you start realizing what the bridge is to the next seat, to the next area of professional development. Mm -hmm. Now, I talk a lot about real estate agents, and that's typically our audience, but investors, this will be of great benefit to real estate investors, um, and this will be of great benefit to small business owners, because I think we all go through these five C's as a professional development. You know, I think about, uh, as you know, I have three daughters, uh, beautiful young ladies, one of them is preparing to graduate uh, and in a less than two weeks she'll be 18 years old how does that happen wow. no idea but um, I was thinking about it and I used to take my kids to uh, a little amusement park here in the area you've probably been there Six Flags and mm -hmm. they've got this little place there uh, and it's kind of this butterfly fly place right like there's these, all mm -hmm. these beautiful butterflies Do you remember that and yeah. you walk through and there's this vacuum and and you come through and it's kind of humid and stuff but then these butterflies they start landing on your arm on your shoulder and mm -hmm. the little girls they just love you know the butterfly but you know christina that butterfly didn't start out that way right? the kids would admire it these beautiful butterflies and just robust brilliant colors and just gliding through the air and but they didn't start out that way they actually started out as an egg on a leaf somewhere. And then they turned into, you know, a caterpillar. And then they turned into a cocoon. And eventually they became a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And so what happens in professional development, we look and say, I, I wanna be a butterfly. But you, you, you might become a caterpillar first, right? You, and you're gonna go through that period of time where you have to learn to, in some sense, you know, uh, metaf metamorphosize into uh, that beautiful butterfly. And that's very much like professional development. And I think that when you think about professional development, um, there's really a science to it and there's an art. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about the art, but there is a science behind it too. And in business, uh, especially in the real estate business, the science, uh, ironically also has five C's and I'll kind of walk you through those so you know what the science is and then we'll spend the rest of the call on the art and the five C's of the science of development of a professional development or business development uh, the first C is contact like you've got to make contact um, swimming is not a contact sport boxing is a contact sport real estate is a contact sport um, if you're not making contacts uh, you are about ready to go out of business. You can be a real estate agent, but you cannot be a secret agent in this industry. It does not work. We make this business so complicated. Um, we simply, it's as simple as this. When people think of real estate, do they think of you? If the answer is yes, then you have, um, you have uh, you've made contacts and now you have customers. And that's the second C. And we define a customer very specifically. And notice I don't use the word lead, um, you know, they're not, they're not a, a, you know, a referral. We use, we use the C and we use customer because the reason we use a customer is because a customer can be defined and we define a customer as having five things. Number one, we want them to be able to give us a name and then a phone number and an email address uh, that they want to buy now or in the near future and they have not or are not an agent. If those five exist, we've defined them as a customer. And once you have customers, then we want to go to the third C, which is clients. And Christine, if you and I were to work together, you would become a client. You'd have an agreement with me and I would have an agreement with you and I would have some responsibilities. The industry would call those fiduciary responsibilities. Uh, you'd have some responsibilities, right? If I call, you gotta, you gotta pick up, you gotta return the phone call. We gotta work together and you become a client. And the fourth C, so you got contact, you got customer, you got client, and the fourth is contract. Right, like you need to find a contract. Everything happens in real estate by contract. Whether you write an offer on a property uh, or whether you receive an offer on a property that you have listed, the fourth C in the professional development 
you know, the science of it is a contract. And the fifth C is you finally have a closing. And so that's the science of it. And frankly, our industry talks a lot about that. Now, they don't use the five C's. They'll say something like, how many referrals did you get? Or how many leads did you get? Or how many pop buys? And they're talking all about it. Today, I, I want to move away from that topic. And I want to focus on the art side of it. Because there, are very, there is a very real art. Zig Ziglar said it this way, Christina, that you must, you have to be before you can do, and you got to do before you can have. So mm -hmm. the science part of it is really the having. Uh, how many customers do you have? Uh, how many clients do you have? How many contracts do you have? You led this webinar, the introduction with, Rick has so many reviews. Rick has so many active properties or so many pennies. And our, that's what our team is doing. And that's the have side. But frankly, you've got to be before you could ever do. And you got to do before you can ever have. Today, I'm just going to talk to you about the five C's of B and that process that you're going to go through so that when you go to bed at night, if you're a real estate professional, you're a real estate investor, you're a small business owner. You can say, okay, these feelings that I have and these uh, anxieties and the challenges that I'm experiencing, they're not unique to just me. Um, the average agent in the industry is not successful. Uh, it, studies have said that the average agents in the business, uh, their first year, 50% of this, uh, real estate agents fail. And wow. by their fifth year, Christina, 90% of real estate agents are out of the business. And the average agent sold 3.9 houses last year across our country. And if you think about it, if you're working with an agent that only sold 3.9 houses or four homes in the last year, they're learning along with their clients. No wonder the real estate agent is often deemed one step above a used car salesman, right? Because they're learning along with their clients. And the moment you start recognizing these five C's of professional development in your life, you can then begin to move from one to the next, to the next, to the next, and then you too will be sprinting, and you too will be that beautiful butterfly uh, that my kids love to hang out with and let watch them, you know, land on their shoulder or on their arm or whatever the deal is, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember you were saying once um, that the average real estate agent makes the same as a manager at McDonald's, and so that's ridiculous. That's that shouldn't you, be at all. Well, um, across the state of California, the average manager at McDonald's made $41,000 last year. A okay? store manager, restaurant manager, and they had a 401k, and they had a medical plan, and they had a dental plan, and all, all these other benefits, right? Right. Um, and the average real estate agent made 41000 They were an independent contractor. Uh, they're the ones that paid for their own MLS dues and uh, their own association fees, their signs, lockbox, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, and many of them, when it comes to the professional development, they never get out of the first C. They're stuck there. And mm -hmm. it's, it's sad to see they can. They just, they don't know where they're at, so they have no idea where they're going. So mm -hmm. if I can, as I'm going through these five Cs, we actually take these five Cs and I label our team members. Um, our team members, Last time we checked, on average, if they were with me for over a year, made $209,000 on a yearly basis. That was their average income. Now we're in the San Francisco Bay Area and prices are a little higher and so forth. And they had to be with me for over a year to have those results. And what we do is we, we identify each of our team members as a C1, a C2, hmm. a C3, a C4, and a C5. And I don't do that to be cruel or even to apply something to them that's not accurate. I do that so that I know, okay, they're at C1. I just need to get them to C2, right? I, I don't need to get them to C5. I just need to get them to C2. And if they're at C2, I just want to get them to C3. And if I get them to C3, I just want to get them to C4 and on and on and on. I just take a baby step, just one step at a time. And as we do that, we have team members that reach some amazing professional development. Mm -hmm. So um, let's get started. How do we move from the worm to the butterfly? Like you're saying, 90% are stuck as worms. So, so I talked about briefly, um, and I could do a whole webinar on the science of the five C's, right? The contacts and the customers mm -hmm. and the clients and the 
contracts and the closing. Those are the five C's on the science side. Mm -hmm. and, and the science side is more the transmission, okay, of this thing. The engine, the engine is the art of real estate and professional development. And the reason I say it that way is because the transmission does not move without an engine, mm -hmm. right? Like the engine, it takes an engine, uh, the, the rotations of the engine to get to the transmissions that it can multiply those into, you know, speed and velocity and, and um, you know, the drive of that vehicle. And the same thing is in real estate, like the engine of this thing is your professional development. So let's start off with the first seat, Christina. And I am convinced, um, and I would love to hear you challenge me on this in the Zoom chat if you have uh, additional comments. So we'll try to answer any questions that you have as well. But I'm convinced um, as I've done this now, this is 16 years I've been doing real estate. Um, and I hired my first team member my first year in the business. Actually, it was my second transaction. When I learned um, how a transaction coordinator could leverage my time, mm -hmm. um, I, I hired my first transaction coordinator, mm -hmm. and that was on file number two. And to this day, um, Zillow has us reporting of selling over a thousand homes, and our wow is reported on Zillow. I have never put a file together. Uh, again, since my first file, I learned the value of a transaction coordinator. It provided great leverage. And, um, and so I'm convinced that these C's line up to anyone in our profession. And you can identify yourself on this call where you stand. Let's start with number one. Um, C1 is confidence. Oh, man, I remember, Christina, when I started in the real estate business, I didn't know what I didn't know. I mean, mm -hmm. it would have been one thing if I knew what I didn't know. I didn't even know what I didn't know. Right. And um, a lot of people said, Rick, you got to fake it till you make it. I never liked that saying. I, I always found that it was not sincere. It wasn't genuine. It wasn't authentic. And I just don't like people that, you know, they're, they're not real. They're, they're, they're fake in some way. Mm -hmm. So this idea of being fake to me um, didn't work. So I realized the value of you don't fake it till you make it, really you crank it until you make it. Meaning mm -hmm. that you go to work and you study early and you stay late um, and, and you, you, you're a vicarious reader and student of the industry and the market and, and you really don't fake it till you make it, you really crank it till you make it. I mean, you get up earlier, you stay a little later and your work-life balance, Rick, what about work-life balance? Man, I'm all for work-life balance, but you don't have it. You have no work-life balance in your first year when you're trying to develop confidence. Because, Christina, I cannot sell you something that I am not confident in myself. And one very elementary way to develop this confidence is for you as a real estate professional, for you as a real estate investor, and for you as a small business owner, is to invest in your own product. Like, if you own a restaurant and you're watching this and you don't eat at your own restaurant, that's a problem. If you own a hardware store and you don't buy your own hardware, that's a problem. Okay, mm -hmm. Let's parallel that to the majority of people that are on this call and they're real estate professionals. And you're selling real estate and you don't own real estate. That's a problem. Okay, And, and it doesn't mean that, you, 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 um, that it won't take time. I get that. And, and you got to buy real estate at the right time. And we do an entire series on investors right and how to buy property and so there's a timing but if you're a real estate professional and you need to own your own product uh, you need, because if you own your own product there's a level of confidence that comes with it you know my story stems from us buying our first home i was in my early 20s um, and i bought my first home and although the decision to buy my home was amazing it's going up in value um, I was paying down my mortgage and we were able to paint the house we wanted to paint, the color we wanted to paint it, do all the things we wanted to do, but the experience was a nightmare. And it was from that little bit of confidence, like, wow, this is an amazing decision. And, and I want people to have a better experience buying real estate than I did. And because of that, it kind of birthed the passion, if you will, um, to help others have the kind of experience they're excited to tell a friend about. And that's why we have a, nearly a thousand five-star reviews. And so if you have confidence, <clears throat> um, it'll go ahead of you. 
And you need to develop confidence, and that's C1. And sometimes confidence might even just be opening the front door to a house or unlocking the lockbox, right? Uh, I often am reminded that when I go and show a home um, and you open the, it, some of the hardest parts, just getting into the house. And if you're a real estate agent on this call, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Between the appointments and where's the lockbox and accessing the lockbox. And then you try to get into the home and the key doesn't work and the key's stuck and you got to jiggle it just right before the door opens. And then you got to lock it all back up. And then you have a security system. What if you have pets in the house? Like just getting in the house. <laughs> and, and you start to develop confidence in real estate. And as you, and, and confidence is critically important. And every person goes through that. Some people never leave C1 and they stay in C1. And if you stay in C1, then you never reap the real benefits and rewards of what this industry has to offer. Uh, C1, I remember it was um, my first year in business and I had an ongoing question that people, clients, customers, I'd go on an appointment, a buyer appointment or a listing appointment. Mm -hmm. And I started in the business, well, it was 16 years ago. So I was in my, my 20s. And you know what? They, every person I met with asked me the same question. You want to know what it was? What? They asked me, Rick, how long have you been in the business? Mm -hmm. This is my first year. And um, they, every person asked me the question, and that led me to believe it wasn't that person. It was me portraying a lack of confidence wow that procured that question. They also asked me, how old are you? Mm -hmm. And when I began to pivot, when I went from C1 in my life to C2, guess what they never asked me again? They right. never asked me how old I was. I was still in my 20s, and they never asked me how long I was in the business. In other words, I generated that question because I was in a C1 state. I lacked confidence in the industry. Um, and because of that, I created a vacuum in the conversation. And that vacuum was filled with the question of, well, hey, Rick, how old are you? And hey, how long have you been in the business? Mm -hmm. And I still looked in, the in my 20s. I still had the baby face uh, a year later. But nobody ever asked me the question because I had established enough confidence to move from C1 to C2. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important um, to kind of recognize that confidence, you know, some people have no confidence, uh, and that's unhealthy. Um, and that's kind of what we're talking about. They, they show up, they, they don't have confidence in who they are, they don't have confidence in what they sell, uh, they don't have confidence in how they're going to sell it, they, they even might have forgotten why they got in the business to help somebody buy and sell in the first place. And then you have, to the opposite extreme, you have what I call ego confidence. Mm -hmm. Like these are people where it's all about me. Like everything's about me. I'm the best. I remember I used to listen to scripts that people would give me. And the scripts would start off with a real estate coach saying, start off a cold call with your, you know, the best. You're the top agent. You're the number one agent. Like start branding that message. And it just felt egotistical to me. And mm -hmm. nobody ever talked that way in the real world. And it wasn't sincere, it wasn't genuine, it wasn't authentic. And so you've got these two kind of bookends, and, and I'm not advocating either one of them. I think both of them have a path of failure. Uh, being a person of faith, uh, I believe in a God confidence. You know, for me, if God's for me, who could be against me? Uh, I believe that I can do all things, right? It's just there's a confidence that begins to permeate uh, in our life, uh, for me as a person of faith. And so you may not be a per person of faith listening to this, and that's okay, that's cool. Um, but what I am saying is that there's a confidence that you must have uh, in level C1 so that people stop asking you, how long have you been in the business? Or for me, when I was in my 20s, how old are you? Don't create that question, because the next thing that follows that question is a simple statement that says, thank you for your time, yeah. right? right? Mm -hmm. And the next agent comes in right behind me and brush shoulders and signs the listing. The next yeah. agent comes in and writes the offer on the property. The next agent comes in and serves at that client because that's the follow-up to, that's the second part. That's, you know, that's, that's section B 
when you when they ask you how old are you and how long you've been in the business mm -hmm. okay. and so as you develop that confidence you will move out of c1 and then into c2 one great um way that i see that you giving your clients or your um your team confidence is our weekly team meetings i'm not an agent but i have confidence in the real estate market because i sit in on those meetings you do our market updates every week so that way if someone asks a question you always say the number one question people ask you is how's the market and you can't say it's good it's fine it's you give specific details and so knowledge is power the old saying and so you give confidence by educating and you have so many resources so that's um one great thing about being on a team is you have the confidence given to you by your coaches your leads all the resources you provide the experience so I can definitely see how that's level one and how you're equipping your, your um, agents to have the confidence they need. Well, that's exactly right, Christine. And then we have partner every agent uh, that's new to the industry with a lead, not a lead like a buyer or seller, but a lead agent and a coach to help them get the most productivity. And every transaction has a transaction coordinator. And many of our transaction coordinators have been with me for a very long time. Some of them are real estate brokers themselves. Uh, so then they, they just, they go from C1 to C2 really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, because if you stay in C1, you become very average, typical real estate agent. Uh, you're, every time you're selling a house, you're selling it for the first time to you as an agent, mm -hmm. as well as you're helping that client sell the home for the first time. And, and that's an unhealthy combination, right? Two people that don't know what they're doing working together is bound to be a disaster. And so by moving, by having the support of a real estate team, and I know there's a lot of team leaders on this call and you've got a real, great real estate team, like you are providing the support for real estate professionals to win and to move from C1 to C2 in a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. So what is C2? Okay, so let's go to C2. Now C2 is consistency. So once you develop some confidence, then it's all about consistency. Now, if you think about uh, your local gym um, and you think about the first week in January, what do you think of? Like the gym is packed, right? Mm -hmm. And and people are there, they're at the gym. It's the first week, it's January 2nd. It's January 3rd, there's not a spot available, there's not a treadmill available, there's not a stationary bike available, every bench is taken, every class is packed at capacity. Right. But Christina, uh, Christina, what happens mid-February? Well, I'm not a gym person. <laughs> <laughs> what would you <laughs> guess that happens? It's empty, New Year's resolutions don't and work. <laughs> we all know that, right? And the gym right. is in February. And the goals that the person that the person had in January, they faded. Right. And what we're going to tell you is that in order to be successful in this business, that you need to be a person of select discipline. Mm -hmm. now, now, catch me. This does not mean you're a disciplined person. It's not that you have to get up at 5 a.m. and go to bed at 10 p.m. And every moment of your day is structured. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. But you must be a person of select discipline. The Italian economist. Um, Pareto, uh, and most of you know that as the 80-20 rule, identified that if you focus on the right thing, the right 20%, it delivers 80% of the results. He was actually an economist and in Italy looked at the agriculture and he realized that 20% of the land, 20% of the dirt produced 80% of the crops. And he said, I wonder if that's true in other areas of life. And we've come to know that as the 80-20 rule or the 20-80 rule, also known as the Pareto principle. And your ability to stay consistent in this business is critical. And what happens with a typical real estate agent in our industry, their business looks like a roller coaster, doesn't it, right? Like I always say, uh, one month, you can afford a Mercedes. And the next month, you didn't have any closings. You cannot afford the gas for that same Mercedes, right? So, and it's this emotion. And that, that happens financially, which we could see very easily on a financial report or on your bank statement. That happens emotionally. Like, it is very, very emotional to have uh, a big month and then to have 
thing the following month, right? Try to, try to feed a family with that type of strategy. It doesn't work. Try to have a budget with that kind of strategy. It doesn't work. So your ability to create consistency, it's often not fun, it's often not exciting, it's often not sexy to do these things. Your ability to get up every day and start to create consistency and do the right things over and over and be in what I call opportunities way is imperative uh, for your success. And when you have confidence and now you combine it with some consistency, well, what would that look like practically? I've been speaking mm -hmm. a lot of metaphorical or giving you a lot of analogies. Um, what does that look like? Let's just take open houses, okay? Uh, this week, Christy, and I'm just super proud of our team, Shelter in Place, we have done, I think we've done at least 15 open houses this week. Wow, that's great. 15 virtual, and we did them all virtual this past week. Um, and our team members, those I would identify in C2, they are doing consistent open houses. And by the way, I'm reading the comments from those that are watching the open house. Oh, this is amazing. This is great. Man, great job. Wow, this is perfect. And I know what's happening. They're creating this consistency with these open houses. And what's going to happen, Christina, is when their sphere of influence thinks of real estate, they're going to think of them. Mm -hmm. And when they think of them and their water heater went out, they're going to call and say, I want a new house. Or when they have another baby and they bring them home and there's not enough room in that house, they're going to say, I need a bigger house. Or when their kids, like my kids, are getting ready to leave for college um, and they're going to need a smaller home or whatever. And it's the moment they think of real estate, who do they think of? Mm -hmm. And this consistency of doing an open house every single weekend begins to create consistency. Does, is it only an open house? No, there's many ways that you can create consistency. And you don't have to do it, um, you don't have to do it every day of your life, but you must do it daily. Because if you're not participating in these things daily, these regular activities that really catapult your results, you don't have to do it all of the days of your life. But if you want to be successful, you have to create that consistency in the days. And if we parallel this to finances, Right. I mean, it would be unreasonable to think you'd have a retirement plan without consistently feeding into your 401k, right. your IRA. And, you know, you and I did a full webinar. It was our most popular webinar of all called The Four R's. It's now on our podcast. People can listen right. to it. Uh, we got, I've got several calls after those, and, and I've enjoyed having those conversations. But if you don't contribute to that on a consistent basis, right, regardless right. of what the stock market's doing, that's called dollar cost averaging. Regardless of what the stock market's doing, you don't participate in that on a regular basis, you're not going to have anything that's of substance or sustainable, right? It takes that consistent. Uh, it, in your relationship, you don't spend time with your spouse on a consistent basis, right? There's going to be problems. You don't spend time with your kids on a consistent basis. And if you don't spend time in your business on a consistent basis, you see the real estate business, um, this idea of being independent, um, most people have come into the industry thinking, okay, I'm going to be an independent contractor. I'm going to be a real estate agent. What that means is I can take the free time, uh, that I can take the fame that comes along with it, and I can take the fortune. And they end up taking the free time and maybe the fame because they're in real estate and their picture's on a sign, and they lose the fortune. They never capture the fortune that's available. And really, the fortune is derived in consistency. It's the daily habits. What are you doing on a daily basis? An open house is a simple way to do consistent open houses. Gives you something to talk about. What you find is that in order to move from C2 to C3, which I better go to now, Christy, and I could talk on these all day long. <laughs> I better go to C3. C3 is that you now begin to establish collaboration. Okay, what do I mean by collaboration? Collaboration means that you're not by yourself. See, mm -hmm. the real estate business, when I was talking about it being an independent contractor, right? And you would contrast that to an employee. Um, one, an independent contractor by very nature is independent. Uh, being independent, friends, is unhealthy because nobody succeeds alone. You go fast by yourself, but you go far with others. Success leaves clues, right? You win together. 
team, everyone together, everyone achieves more. Whatever analogy, metaphor you want to use, but we work best, we succeed best when we have collaboration. Okay, so mm -hmm. independence, which is the nature of an independent contractor, is unhealthy by its very nature. You will not succeed if you're all by yourself. And yet being dependent, okay, I'm here, where's my next customer? I'm here, I'm ready to trade my hours for dollars, being an employee, that is unhealthy. What we believe in is that there's an interdependence, mm -hmm. that Christina, you know, you have strengths, I have strengths. Christina is an amazing, amazing writer and blogger. I don't even attempt to do that. Christina, I tell you what I'm thinking, you type it up beautifully, that's your strength. Um, that's my weakness. I have strengths. You have strengths. We need to work in our strengths, not our weaknesses. And this is never truer than in real estate. And if you think about collaboration as a real estate agent, embodied in every real estate professional is really three things, three successful things. Uh, this is not original from me, by the way. This is written about in a book called The, the, um, the Conversion Code by Chris Smith. Um, and Chris Smith was formerly with Realtor.com, and he wrote something I thought was brilliant. Actually, it changed how we do business. And he said, embodied in every real estate agent is three things. It's a marketer. You've got to be marketing. Mm -hmm. And when you're busy marketing, then you start scheduling appointments. And then when you schedule appointments, then you have closings. And so you've got to be a marketer, a scheduler, and a closer. But we all know what happens on this roller coaster ride. You get busy marketing, or you could say prospect or lead generation, and now you have an appointment, you have a showing, you have a listing, you have a client, and now you begin to spend all of the time with that client, and eventually you have a closing, and when you start having closings, what drops? Your marketing, right, and if you drop your marketing, then what then follows suit, your scheduling, and then what follows suit after that, your closing, and so when I was a kid, there was a at that same Six Flags when I was young, there was a guy that used to spin plates. I don't know if you remember this. He'd line up multiple plates and he'd spin one and get two of them going and the crowd starts cheering. Wow, look at that's amazing. He's got two plates. And pretty soon he's up to 20 plates. And then, you know, the one's about ready to drop and he goes back and he spins that first plate. And that's what your life starts looking like. You look like the guy that's spinning plates. And what ends up happening in your business is some of those plates start dropping and shattering on the floor. And the moment your marketing plate shatters, you don't have scheduling. And if you don't have scheduling, you don't have any closings. And then you gotta start this whole engine up again. And it's unhealthy. So this independent idea that I'm gonna be the marketer, I'm gonna be the scheduler, I'm gonna be the closer, all embodied in one person just doesn't work. And we see that in our industry and it's why there are so many challenges with agents being productive and successful outside of the scope of a real estate team. And so there's this inter interdependence that we like to look at. When we look at the real estate agent as an example, the most successful real estate agents I know have a disc personality profile. We've studied this inside and out of an IS disc personality profile. That means they're good with people. They're, they're interpersonal skills um, and they're steady. Okay, that's the S part, the I, interpersonal, S, so they're steady, they're stable, they're consistent. Matter of fact, a lot of our team members, they love hanging out with their clients. It's why they deliver such a great service. Uh, people know them, they like them, and they trust them, mm -hmm. and that's important. But there's another aspect to real estate that we often don't recognize, and it's the SC disc person. It's the dotting the I's, it's the crossing the T's, making sure the contract is and so when a real estate agent tries to be both the people person and the paper person, one of them falls, one of them fails, one of them is um, weak, one of them is strong. And typically what ends up happening in that environment is that it takes both of them to be successful. So what we found is if we hired the right people, brought them on the bus, and we put them on the right seat, meaning that you have a dispersonality profile of an SC. You like working with paper. You like working on projects. You're a great transaction coordinator. You're a great administrative assistant, okay? Then we could also bring on team members on that same bus and say, well, you like working with people. And if I can get the right people on the bus, 
which we do a whole video on our culture tree and how we do that and get the right people on the bus. And I get them on the right seats. And most importantly, working on the right assignments. Mm -hmm. And we all are heading to the same destination, which is what I call a shared purpose as a real estate team. Like we're all driving the bus to the same purpose. We get the right people. Then you create this interdependency. Then you start creating collaboration so that you plus me, Christina, is not an addition. It's a multiplication of our efforts. Mm -hmm. And when you start adding team members, okay, you're the right team member to fit right here. You've got these natural, what I believe is your God-given strengths, talents, and ability, and you're operating in your strengths, and I'm aligning people, people with people, and I'm aligning paper, people with paper, and they're, they're together, working together in their strengths, amazing things begin to happen. And that's a combination of what we call collaboration. It's a team working together uh, to accomplish more together than they could ever do on their own. You definitely uh, did that real life example. I quit my past job. Uh, I was out of work for two weeks and then someone from your team posted an inspirational quote and I said, oh, I needed that. I'm looking for a job. Five seconds later, Rick, you DM me on Facebook and said, great, what are you good at? <laughs> and we had known each other through church for a while. So you knew yep. my character and my beliefs. And so that's what you did. You said, okay, you're a decent person. What are you good at? Let's find a seat for you on my bus. Well, so, in, in really what, what we did is we know our culture. Mm -hmm. And I knew you'd fit the culture, right? You and I never had this conversation, but I knew you'd fit the culture. Right, yeah. So um, you weren't available prior to it. And, and that wasn't something that was appealing to you. In the moment you were in transition, and I knew you fit the culture, uh, which is we did an entire webinar on our culture tree, which is what mm -hmm. webinar number 10 and what that looks like. We call it a culture tree. Metaphor, we use a metaphor of the roots, the soil, the roots, the trunk, the branches, and the fruit. And I knew that you fit that culture. Um, and then I knew you had skills. And so those skills that were like, wow, we have an empty seat. I wanted to do these podcasts with you. I wanted to do more webinars with you. I wanted to do a lot more writing with you. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a seat that was empty on our bus. You fit the culture. Welcome to the team. Let's get you on the right seat and then get you working on the right assignments. And then make sure that all everyone on the bus knows where the next bus stop is, mm -hmm. which I would call it is where your fruit is, where the goal is, where your wildly important goal. Like, where are we stopping? And where are we ultimately going as a real estate team? Like, what does that final destination look like? Because people are attracted to a destination first that is first class, and second, that's bigger than themselves. Like if I said, Christina, I want you to join the team because I'd like to make more money myself. You're like, yeah, Rick, thanks so much, but no thanks. Right. If I said, Christina, I want you to join the team because when people buy and sell a home, it's unforgettable, and I want our clients to have the kind of experience they're excited to tell a friend about. Would you help me do that? You're like, oh, that's a pretty big goal. That's a pretty aspirational um, uh, mission. That's where we're headed. That's the bus stop. You know, that's the final destination. How do I help more people have the kind of buying and selling experience that they're excited to tell a friend about? And how do we have our help our team members have the kind of, in some sense, team member experience they too are excited to tell a friend about? So that they're telling their friends, wow, this is the place I get to not just work, but I get to do life with these people that have goals that are bigger than themselves. And so when I saw that you would fit our culture and I knew you would and that we had that empty seat, it was a no brainer to give you a call and say, hey, let's start working together. And you know, you and I have been doing that for now for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> so, so what is, when are you, we on the fourth thing? So yeah, we gotta move along, don't right. we? So when you, hit, <laughs> when you hit collaboration, okay. I want you to think about it this, and, and actually Gary Keller was a personal, uh, was a mentor of mine. I got a chance to meet with him individually, and um, he wrote a book called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, which mm -hmm. I read multiple times, and he, he outlines um, this principle in the book that uh, you reach ceilings in your life, and when you reach a ceiling, you might have reached a health ceiling, you might have reached a, a relationship ceiling. Well, in this case, I'm talking about your business. When you reach a business ceiling, um, and maybe you define that ceiling as, I can only sell so many homes. Like I'm tapped out, 
rate. I've sold 10 homes, 15 or 20 homes every year for the last five years. Like you hit that ceiling. What breaks you through that ceiling? And what breaks you through that ceiling is leverage. That when you have the right people in your life, the right talent in your life, it breaks you through. Then guess what? You're going to reach a new ceiling. And then you start plateauing again. And you need something that will break through. What he called was being going from entrepreneurial with like personal talents and personal abilities and personal skills mm -hmm. to being very purposeful with your life, right? Like, what does that look like to do that? And so team members and the collaboration will break through that ceiling because you can't do everything by yourself. The mm -hmm. fool tries to do it all themselves. Every, you think about a restaurant. How could you have a good experience at a restaurant if there was only one person, right? One person that was your greeter, one person that was your chef, one person that was your waiter, one person doing the dishes, like the same person doing everything. It's impossible to have a good experience. And real estate agents, without collaboration, without a team, without working together, they try to do it all. They're the transaction query, they're the marketer, they're the schedule, they're a closer. They're selling residential, commercial, property management, some are even offering financing, right? And what ends up happening is they end up delivering a poor level of service, just like the, the business owner, the restaurant owner, that there's only one person in the restaurant trying to serve several tables, wait on them and, and cook for them and clean for them and deliver, you know, up and fill their water glass and all the things that come with it and they cannot do it. And that's what the real estate industry is often a, a great metaphor for. Uh, and what you start to find out is that as you start developing a real estate team, that a specialist or somebody that has a niche market, uh, they can become an expert. Much like if you had a toothache, you wouldn't go to a general doctor, but you'd go to a dentist. Why? Because a dentist has exactly what you need to solve that toothache. So for our team, we have buyer and listing specialists, and they're experts. I mean, most of our buyer specialists, they got a pulse on the market like nobody else. They can tell you every home that's on the market, how to get the offer accepted, how to write it, how to present it. Our listing specialists know how to market it, how to advertise it. Our listing specialists know how to uh, price the property. And there's a level of professionalism and expertise that comes with that specialty, just like the dentist is better equipped to manage the toothache than the general doctor. It's mm -hmm. all through that collaboration. And once you hit collaboration, you're now ready for the next C, Christina. <laughs> Four, and it does produce dynamite. Um, and it's credibility. And credibility is absolutely the game changer in this business. See, I'm convinced uh, that when people enter into the real estate business, uh, they often enter into the business and they know other people, what we call their sphere of influence. And that's good. And 77% of all transactions are, are originated by a relationship. It means you know them in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Or you're referred to them, according to the California Association of Realtors, 77%. And I'm convinced that at first, your sphere of influence probably likes you. And I'm convinced that because of the nature of them being in your sphere, they know you. But I'm also convinced that they don't trust you. And they don't trust you not in a mean or, or, or malicious way. They just don't know that you can actually do what you set, your, your set out to do. They don't know that you could actually sell real estate. And when you start reaching level C4, credibility in the industry, when people think of real estate and how I want to sell my house and they think of you, that you have that credibility in the industry, you have now reached a whole new season, a whole new uh, phase uh, of development professionally. And it's this credibility. I'll give you just a couple of examples. Uh, when you do an open house, you, uh, especially when you do that virtually, we have what we call a mega open house plan, which kind of follows suit with posting and invitation. We kind of think of it like a party. Uh, it's a celebration that particular weekend or right now we're doing them virtually and they're happening all throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, and if we, if we market and advertise to that open house and we believe in doing multiple open houses, so it's not uncommon per property that we'll do four open houses a weekend. 
So we'll do one Saturday a.m. and Saturday p.m. and mm -hmm. Sunday a.m. and Sunday p.m. Now, I want you to think about this, Christina. You're on social media. Uh, you do a lot of social media work for us, and you mm -hmm. see somebody in the business, and they've been in the business for a very short time, and maybe they've gone from C1 to C2 to C3, and now what you see them say is, and maybe they use their phone, and they go, hey, I'm live. It's Saturday morning. Uh, I'm here at this new listing that our team has at 123 Main Street, and they're doing Facebook Live, Instagram, whatever. And then Saturday afternoon, you okay, I'm at my next open house Saturday afternoon, and we're here live at this open house. It's an incredible home. I can't wait to show it to you Sunday morning. Hey, I'm back. I got a new home this week. This week, I'm at, you know, this Sunday, I'm at this property Sunday afternoon. Hey, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm at my new listing here as a team. We've got this beautiful, right? Like four times over the weekend, you begin to establish credibility. You know, why is it that Budweiser, Pepsi, uh, why is it that Coca-Cola has these brand, these large branding images at your local ballpark, right? At your baseball park. Right. Like you, they begin to establish credibility. I'm thirsty. I want a Coke. I'm thirsty. I want a Pepsi, whatever. And so what happens is you start developing credibility. The next thing you know is that when people think of real estate, they start thinking of you because you have credibility. Now, the best way to get credibility in our industry is to have listings, right? Listings give you something to talk about. My grandfather was in the business. And uh, he was what I would call a solo agent. He always did things by himself. And, oh. and uh, my grandfather said, you know, he'd say, you know, son, uh, blisters last. I didn't know what he meant by, by that. And now 16 years in the business and my grandfather's, you know, gone on to heaven. And, mm -hmm. and I think back to his words. And if you have listings uh, to talk about, to advertise, to promote inventory, you do last in the business. He was absolutely mm -hmm. right. Listers do last. I can hear him, you know, in my ear, I can hear him say, son, listers last. And um, that's true. So by having inventory, and as a real estate team, you're not independent or dependent, you're interdependent, and you don't have just your listings, you have the listings of all the team. You know, when you talked about all the listings that we have on the market, Right. Those aren't just my listings. They're not just a listing special. That's, a, that's our entire team or all the contracts that we have. That's the entire team. And they are able to harness. It's no longer then about the eyes and me's. It's now about the us's and we's. In other words, it's not I have a listing. It's we have a listing. It's not, you know, uh, I'm doing this. It's we're doing this. It's, it's about the us's and we's as a team instead of about the eyes and means, because I am convinced that, and as long as I do this business, I am convinced that working together with people, you can accomplish a lot more than you ever can on your own. Mm -hmm. And it's that collaboration that propels you to uh, credibility. You combine that with consistent activity and a degree of confidence, um, not arrogance, uh, but not no confidence, but a degree of confidence, and it's then and only then are you able to reach level C5, and we'll go to the next slide, and that's commission. And the commission is not about the money, okay? This is not about you reaching some level of um, financial status, although I hope you do. I, I hope that you are financially successful in this business. It is about you reaching your potential. And when you stay at C1, C2, C3, or even C4, you are not realizing your potential. You got the free time, you got the fame, but you never received the fortune that the industry has to offer. And Christina, you and I did an entire webinar. Um, it's actually been our most popular webinar on the four R's. So mm -hmm. if you wanna know what to do with your commission, because we parallel it to that of a faucet. Like your commission, your income is your greatest wealth building tool. And if you don't let it go down the drain, but you reach down and fill certain buckets, we call those buckets R's, the four R's, there's four buckets to fill. And as you fill those buckets, then you begin to move from what we call gross income to net income to net worth to finally passive income. 
Like how do you create a stream of revenue income, what we call residual income? And you, you can do that by filling those four R buckets over the course of your career. And so Christina, that's the five C's. That's the five development. That's the, I'm crawling, I'm walking, I'm running, I'm sprinting in the business. It's not the science of it. That's the contacts and customers and clients and contracts and close. It's the art of not what we do, but who we become in the process because you really must be before you can do and you must do before you can have. Uh, Kansas asked, can you repeat um, how much your year or more in average in agent made can yeah, that's a great question, Candace. And I'm sorry, you, you posted that a while ago and we just kind of kept moving on. Um, and I was trying to type it up, but every time I start typing, I get on this top on another topic. But, uh, so Candace, um, in, we look at 1099 income as an independent contractor and I'm a real estate broker uh, and team leader. And so every year I issue 1099s. Well, uh, last year when I issued the 1099s, if a team member was on the team for 12 months or more, uh, the average income was $209,000 and uh, of our team member, average team member with us for 12 months or more. Uh, now we have team members that have been with me almost 10 years. I have team members that have probably been with me for 10 days. Uh, and they had to be with me for a year or more for that statistic to be accurate. Um, and you can learn more about that. We actually did videos on that. If you just go to our website, uh, rickfuller.com, scroll down to see careers and events. And I talk a lot about how we were able to do that. And the, those team members that are doing that, they're C5 team members. Like they are explosive, powerful team members. They're C5 team members that are doing that. Uh, and we got some that are in C1 and that's cool. Like we're gonna grow them. We're gonna help them get to C2 to C3 and on and on and on every step of the way. Well, that's all the time we have. It flies by. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please email me at Christina with a CH at rickfuller.com and I can pass the question on to Rick or one of our team members, but we will definitely get back to you. Our next webinar is actually going to be a live podcast and we have two special guests, a Gerald Johnson, who is the principal coach at Savicon Consulting he does management, marketing, and sales. Um, he's a coach. We have Valerie Bennett Lewis, who is an executive and leadership coach. And our topic is incredible. It's going to be your business after COVID-19. So if you know any small business owners, any agents, they definitely need to be on that new podcast. You can go on Rick Fuller Podcast to find out um, to find us, you can go on your favorite platforms. We're on Apple, we're on Google, we're on Stitcher, and we're expanding. So you can find us there. Um, you can also go to Agents Thrive and ask questions there or see our past webinars. Um, and like I said, email me. There's a little button there that you can contact us. So thank you so much for your time, Rick. Thank you for joining us. Everybody stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Christina. Thank you.